Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is basic dimensions and geometric tolerances. The question submitted was I understand the difference between basic and geometric dimensions, but I'm curious how you decide what features should have basic versus geometric dimensions. In the typical case shown of the square block with four holes in it, how is it decided to basic dimension the hole locations and geometric dimension the size of the block? Is it based on criticality of the feature? Does it have to do with relating back to a datum feature or is it something else entirely? So here's the block in question. And as the question stated, we have geometric tolerances and basic dimensions to locate these four holes back to the datum features that are also being controlled with geometric tolerances. Now, this is a size dimension. This is a size dimension controlling the size of this feature. And this is also a size dimension controlling the size of this feature. And also we have another one controlling the size of this feature. Now, one thing unique about size dimensions is they don't utilize GD and T. Size dimensions are just restricting how big or small that feature is. And size dimensions need opposing elements to measure it. Imagine grabbing this with a caliper or using a micrometer to measure the size. You can assess how big or small it is. That is the defining characteristic for a size dimension. Uh, one thing we didn't show on this drawing is traditional coordinate dimensions. Now, some drawings will utilize traditional coordinate dimensions like this here and have 15 plus or minus some value here to locate a feature of size. Uh, this is kind of the traditional coordinate dimensioning, as I mentioned, way of doing it, uh, but it directly competes with controlling the position using the position symbol. So we wouldn't come in and use coordinate dimensions on this drawing because we've already located these features with a geometric dimension and tolerance. So we have basic dimensions and the geometric tolerance defined in the feature control frame. So if I'm going to change the question ever so slightly, maybe we'll change it to when do I use GD and T over those traditional coordinate dimension plus or minus tolerances, right? Uh, and so let's take a look at this drawing here to kind of facilitate that conversation. Uh, a lot of the drawings we see from the industry utilize a mix of GD and T and traditional coordinate dimensions. Like we see here, this one is locating these two holes to each other, and this one's locating the two holes back to this center point here. And so this is a traditional sort of uh, method of locating features, but we also see clearly the position symbol locating some other features of size on our drawings and basic dimensions identifying where those holes should be with respect to their datum features and then the tolerance in the feature control frame tells us how far away from perfect can it actually be so now we see a mix of these and to address the question of when to use one over the other my argument is you should always use gd and t especially in the scenario of locating features of size to other features, right? Those other features being datum features. We get the added benefit of being able to use the maximum material condition modifier. We get to use the added benefit of being very direct in our tolerancing method as far as how the compound errors such as orientation and location are. Geometric tolerances just do a much better job of defining it and they get the benefit of having a standardized way of interpreting it using the standards. So again, added benefits of using GD and T far outweigh using traditional coordinate dimensions. Uh, and so I'll, to answer the question shortly, always, always use GD and T and basic dimensions over coordinate dimensions. So we'll go ahead and convert this drawing here and we see that we've changed those dimensions to basic dimensions. And those basic dimensions identify where the features should be. Again, these basic dimensions don't have tolerances. And we see the tolerance as far as where the location of it can be diametrically is 0.13 millimeters. And so we can see we can easily just convert these drawings to use basic dimensions and geometric tolerances and gain all the benefits of using GD and T on this drawing. Now, that's not to say that we can't have numerical dimensions with plus or minus tolerances, right? We have the 28 millimeters in the width, and that 28 millimeters doesn't have a tolerance, but we can go to our two-place decimal block here and see that the size of this feature, the size, has a 28 millimeters plus or minus 
uh, 0.25 millimeters, and that's controlling the size. And again, that doesn't utilize datums. It's not locating where this surface is specifically or where this surface is specifically, but we do indirectly control those surfaces because we are controlling this feature of size and its location in 3D space with respect to A and B. And that's controlling where the midplane is created by these two surfaces, where that midplane can be, right? And it's located to A and B. And then we go ahead and identify this midplane as the datum or the width as the datum feature that then we can locate other features too. So we can control the location of these two to that midplane. And so again, adding benefit to using GDT, we get to utilize datums, datum structures, features of size, modifiers for locating things, the bonus tolerances, a lot of great benefits to using GDT. Although I would like to point out that there's only one thing worse than using GDT, and that is using GDT incorrectly. Uh, and so if I'm going to advocate for using GDT, I would say start small with something that's simple. Uh, control all of your features of size with plus minus size dimensions, and then control their locations with either position, uh, and in the case of surfaces, use the profile control. Uh, that's going to get you the biggest benefit for the least amount of work and the least amount of complexity to your drawing. So again, utilize GDNT on everything, but don't just use it blindly, use it appropriately, and the benefits will be boundless. So hopefully that answers your question, and thanks for submitting it. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.